Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. Today we're taking a look around a 6.3 meter rib fitted with a Suzuki 140 horsepower four stroke outboard. The rib was built in 2004 uh, by a company called Ferryman. It's in very good condition, it's extremely low hours. It's only around about 30 hours um, on this uh, boat and engine. It's complete with a twin axle UK spec road trailer. It's got a nice specification including a VHF radio and a, a brand new up to date Garmin uh, chart plotter. And we're going to take a close look around the boat, show you all the features on board, show you the condition that it's in and give you a better idea whether this might be the right rib for you or not. If you're looking for a big brand name rib for posing around the marina and all that type of thing then you should probably stop watching this video now because this, this isn't the rib for you. What this is on the other hand is a sort of tough built, no nonsense rib that is um, well put together, got big chunky tubes, big chunky rub and streak, it's got a decent layout inside, it's got a great outboard engine on it and it's on a good trailer and it's virtually unused. It's not one of the more glamorous brands by any means but it's a great value rib, it's a work boat, it's a tender for a bigger yacht, it's a great fishing or diving platform and it's just a, you know, a good solid, good value rib. In terms of the condition, being that this one has only run 30 hours and it's also had only two owners from you, um, it has been very very lightly used. The hull's never been anti-found. You can tell just by walking around this boat, by looking at the tubes, looking at the rubbing strike. Like this rubbing strike doesn't have any chunks or chips or anything out of it, which is really common in these boats whenever you come in against harbour walls and stuff. They get chunks and chips and scrapes and stuff on the strike, which they're designed to do. But this one is on mark. Um, below the waterline as well, the hull's in great condition. The current owner of the boat had it in the, in the water for the 2014 season. He didn't get around to anti filing. He didn't think he was going to leave it in the marina as for as long as he did. But he, he did and it, that's why we've got a bit of growth down on the back end. Now we've cleaned it up here at the front just so you can see. You know this is the original gel coat finish. There's no anti filing paint or anything on it. Just leave the rest of that sort of powder washed off in the spring before you head to the water. But that's the only time it's actually been kept in the water. The previous owner um, just kept it on the trailer, launched and recovered it and he did that very very seldomly. So taking a walk down along the side of the boat, the tubes are, are in good condition, navy blue tubes with a black rubber streak. We've got this sort of uh, safety rope uh, down through the uh, eyelets on the side. There's lots of Treadmaster uh, decking, tread plates up along the tops of the tubes. So if you're climbing forward on the rim or if you're stepping on board um, from the marina, marina or from a pier, you've got secure footing underway there and I mean everything looks pretty good the the, the join between the uh, the tubes to the hull it's all solid there's nothing you know the adhesive is all in good shape there's no there's no um, fabric peeling back or anything um, and the rear cones as well they're all marked you know this is another area where you get chunks and stuff and scrapes this one's uh, in very good shape here as well the condition down along the starboard side is also very good again the rubber strike is on mark Trailers had a bit of a knock here at the front, um, which this is pretty common if you know if you're pulling the, or driving the boat up on the trailer, these rubber blocks can get a wee bit of a knock. So it's in a knock, but the hull one behind it is, is, is okay. It hasn't damaged the hull or anything. There's a little bit of color fading on the tops of the tubes, but um, it's really pretty minor. And apart from that, the tubes, again, down along this side, are in great shape, both up the top and where they join onto the hull down here. Again, you can see, the actual underlying condition of the, the, the gel coat is perfect. No, no scrapes, I couldn't find any scrapes or damage on the gel. There's no osmosis signs, anything like that. It's all in really good shape. I mean, it really doesn't look like a 2004 boat, this at all. There's one little patch here on the, uh, the stern quarter on the starboard side. Um, not too sure what's happened here. I actually didn't, didn't notice that until I walked down along here. But this is, um, it's obviously not leaking the, because the tubes have been inflated. The boat's been in with me now for about three or four weeks. The tubes haven't gone down, so that's holding air uh, perfectly. And again, rubbing straight back here. One little mark here, but apart from that, it's all, it's all good here as well. The boat is fitted with a Suzuki DF140 outboard engine. So it's a four-stroke motor. Um, very, very popular engine, very reliable. That gives this boat a great turn of speed. 
Um, handling stuff is also, also very good and it's very fuel efficient as well. Very quiet and idle. You know, we've got all the benefits of the four stroke there. So it's quiet running, very smooth as well. Fuel economy is great. And it's just a very refined motor. Now the current owner actually used to work for a Suzuki engineer. So he has like the Suzuki software and stuff. So whenever he bought it, he plugged it in. It had 21 hours. He's had it for about 18 months. It had 21 hours on it then. He didn't get a chance to use the boat as much as he'd hoped. Uh, and he's only put on about seven or eight hours on the motor. So we're still at less than 30 hours on this engine, which is, I mean, it's, it's not even run in yet. Um, we're gonna pop the hood now and show you underneath the coil, but it, it looks in great shape. All the, uh, the exterior covers are in great condition. The coilings and stuff, the paint, is, the paint finish is perfect. The propeller is in really good shape as well. Uh, apart from a little bit of paint um, worn off the skeg, which you sort of get around, you know, in sandy bottoms and stuff. That's the only thing that uh, would distinguish this from a brand new motor. Under the hood, the engine is, uh, looks to be in very good condition. There's virtually no sign of any corrosion around here. Um, no signs of any water leaks or oil leaks or overheating. All the paint finish on the, the rocker covers and, and the engine blocks all in really good, good shape. Like you would expect on an engine that's only run sort of 30 hours. I'm just going to dip it for oil as well to show you the condition of the oil, which is again, we haven't serviced this. This is how the engines come into us. So the level's perfect, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's crystal clear. So you can't really fake that, you know. As engines get older and start to coke up and stuff, you know, the oil goes black over time, but that looks, looks like a brand new engine. Um, going by the condition of the oil anyway. So, yeah, I mean, and everything, everything stacks up. I don't have the software to plug in to verify these hours. However, I do know on these Suzuki instruments, whenever you key up, the needle rises to tell you the number of hours on the engine. That, only, that function only kicks in whenever you've gone above 50 hours. And so whenever we turn on, the needle's not moving. So that means that this is definitely under 50 hours. And going by the owners, what the owner's telling me, he, he estimates it around 30. So either way, it's an extremely low hours motor and there is absolutely bags of life left in it. I mean the, the, the value here is a huge part of the value of this boat's obviously in the engine. Whenever you look at the asking price of the boat, you know this thing's worth this thing on its own has to be worth about six or seven percent seventy percent of that price. So um, this is a really great value package. One quick feature to point out on the engine as well is this remote trim button here. So you can trim the engine up and down without having to jump up and get into the helm. Um, so that's great for putting the boat you know, on and off the trailer and things, or if you're bringing it in to shore, um, you know, say you have an anchor up at the beach and you want to walk it out in the deeper water to fire up the engine, you can control the, the trim without having to get inside the boat. You can see here we've got a couple of elephant trunk balers on the transom at either side. We've also got these big D-rings here, so you can use those for towing um, you know, water sports toys and skis and stuff like that there and also as tie down points for the trailer and this boat is also fitted with a stainless steel um, A-frame on the back, nice big chunky one, looks really good in proportion to the boat, we've got a VHF antenna mounted up there and also nav lights mounted either side of there so everything back here looks really good, transom's nice and clean, all the fiberglass moldings are good, again the adhesion points where the tubes and fix on the, the rigid hull, they're all in really good, good shape and good condition. The layout on this rib is pretty straightforward. We've got a huge big uh, helm console here, which is very good actually. It's like the full width of the, the actual floor. A wrap around console with a helm seat and a passenger seat. There's integrated handrails here behind the seat so you can stand and hold on to something be behind these two front seats. Um, We've got storage in, in underneath each of these seat boxes and then we've also got a big seat box here at the, at the back uh, which isn't quite the full width, you can walk around that to get access down to the transom but there's, it's wide enough for, for two adults to sit on. We've got a, a full backrest on this so you can sit facing forward if you want to, or facing backward sorry, or forward. And underneath here we've got the battery, battery box and isolator switch Got the, the air pump here for the tubes is in there as well, um, and an extra bit of storage. The floor is all molded um, with non-skid, and um, we've got a little access panel 
just down here, giving access down into the fuel tank. So there's an underfloor fuel tank in this boat with a filler on the, the starboard side of the helm console. Um, then further forward, we've got more deck space in front of the console as well. We've got an anchor box, up, anchor locker up the very front there. Um, so there's pretty good room in here. There's a decent bit of deck space around here. There's room for storing bits and pieces of gear, whether it's in the seats, down the side of this, this uh, stern seat box, or indeed up in front of the console. Um, and uh, I quite like the layout. This big wraparound helm also gives great protection for the elements to all the passengers. Anybody sitting back here, even if you're sitting in this seat here, you know, that's, uh, you're know not getting buffeted by the wind and stuff. That's taking the brunt of the, uh, the elements. So it's, uh, it's all, in, again, condition-wise, as you would expect, with the boat having only done 30 hours, you know, it looks virtually like brand new. Just taking a quick look at uh, some of the bits and pieces of equipment back here, you can see we've got a Baystar hydraulic uh, steering setup on the, uh, on the engine, so um, you get all the benefits of hydraulic steering, you know, you don't get any kickback on the, on the engine, and it's also equal force to turn both directions and stuff, so that's, that's a very good thing to have, and it's in great, great working condition. We've got um, a big fuel pre-filter here with a clear bowl and a drain point on the bottom of it, so that's a good feature to have, pre-filter, make sure the fuel getting into the engine is nice and clean. And as, in addition to these elephant trunk balers, which help drain the boat whenever she's underway, we've also got a little um, integrated bilge pump with a, a float switch here. So if you are leaving the boat in the marina, um, and you get, you know, there's no cover with this boat, so it will tend to fall up in water, so that'll it builds it out overboard so that it um, keeps the, the water level uh, down, so that's that's all good. And all the mounting points for the A-frame and everything are nice and solid. Everything's in, uh, in really good condition here. The helm position on this boat is one of my favourite things about it. It's nice and clean and simple, um, and it also gives you great protection from the elements, which is important on a boat like this, um, given it's sort of all-weather uh, nature. So the the seat as well. I think it's well set back from the from the steering position. Um, steering wheel falls easily to hand. We've got our throttle and shift lever here on your left hand side, which is in a decent position as well. Um, and this wraparound screen gives you great visibility out through it, as well as great protection from the elements. These um, little vertical supports double up as a great hand hand handrail for uh, the passenger stuff and things as well. And if you're standing up. You know, this uh, raised handrail here with a good gap between the handrail and the top of the screen means you've got a, a really good handhold there as well. And if you are standing up, you've got clear visibility over the top of the screen. Um, so in terms of the equipment, it's fitted with a Navman VHF 7100 radio, um, which is original to the boat and it seems to be a good working order. And then we've got a Garmin GPS map 751 touchscreen chart plotter. So this uh, replaced, there wasn't a, there was the, the current owner told me whenever he bought the boat there was a Navman plotter on here but he just wanted to bring it up to date so he put on this brand new Garmin and it's full touch screen, it's a great system um, and it's, uh, it's buying up to date so that's in perfect, perfect work on order. We've also got the standard Suzuki instruments here, so everything's working as it should, whenever you key on it, it, it brings on the buzzer, brings on the four engine uh, warning lights, check engine, temperature, oil and rev and then they go out after a couple of seconds as they're supposed to. So we've got the rev counter, trim gauge and uh, built in fuel, fuel gauge as well for the integrated tank. And then down below the, uh, the dash we've got a uh, switch gear here for our electronics, navigation lights and we've got a bunch of spares as well so if you want to fit any additional equipment I think we've got like three switches uh, spare there. So everything's in really good shape like I said, and um, it's uh, you, you know you get good protection for the elements. You're able to keep good control over the boat from this helm position. So if you walk up along the, the tops of the tubes, um, we've got the Treadmaster um, tread material, so it's you've got safe footing on the way, and you can hold on to the the, uh, the handrail around the top of the console, and you get access up into this fore deck area. So again, it's a pretty decent size. If you're diving off the boat, loads of room here for you know, carrying your bottles and stuff like that, or if you're fishing up here, you have plenty of room for casting a, a, a line and stuff, um, or just for storing uh, bits and pieces of gear. Again, it's all non-skid non uh, deck underfoot. We've got this uh, anchor locker here with more the non-skid section, stainless steel hinges and flat taxes and stuff, giving access and a decent sized anchor locker. 
Um, we've got a rope guide over the front of the tube if you are dropping an anchor out. And then we've got a storage access into this uh, helm console for a bit, bit more storage and also you get service access into the back of the dash and uh, fuel filler, hose and all that sort of stuff. So again, everything's in really good shape virtually on mark. Like I said, we've got this little bit of discoloration in the, in the, top of the tops of the tubes. Um, but apart from that, the thing looks almost like the very good condition. The engine on this rib is starting on the first turn of the key. The battery's in great condition. We haven't had to charge it up or anything, so it's good battery. Uh, and it's starting up first turn of the key. So I'll just I'll start it up briefly here, just to let you hear it. So as you can see, the engine's starting, first turn of the keys, running really good. We're going to take the boat to the water as well and put her through her paces. So you can see just how well she performs on her way. But it, it's a great hull shape. This, it co closes to a pretty fine point at the bow. And because you've got a nice high prow as well on it, it handles rough water really well. And just generally performs great around the coast.
They're both sitting on a, an SBS twin axle roller coaster trailer. It's rated to a gross capacity of 1800 kg, so the boat's probably around about 1400 or something like that. Um, it's a roller coaster trailer. It's missing one roller from here, but apart from that, all the other rollers are there. The wheel bearings are in good shape. We towed the boat um, around about 70 miles from the owner's home to the showroom, and it towed without a problem. So, wheel bearings and stuff are in good shape. And if you're looking at this boat from further afield, you know, through England or Europe, um, it'll, be, it, it'll be really straightforward to get a transporter on that trailer. So, it's included in the price. So there you have it, that's our 2004 Ferryman 6.3 meter rib fitted with a Suzuki 140 horsepower 4 stroke outboard. As I said, it's only run about 30 hours. The whole boat and engine, everything looks virtually like new. It certainly does not look like a 2004 package. And I think at the asking price, given the, how little use she's had and the condition that she's in, I think it represents excellent value for money. As I said, this is not a big brand name rib. It's not one of those glamorous ones that you're going to pose around the marina on. But if you're looking for a no-nonsense rib that's going to be great in the rough seas, uh, around the coast and stuff, and you know, good for a bit of water sports, a bit of off sports, offshore use, diving, fishing, whatever, um, this, this ferryman could be, could be a great investment for someone. It is in very good condition and um, it's the full package. You know, you've, you've got all the, navig the navigation equipment on there, they've got that brand new up-to-date Garmin Char plotter. The engine has done nothing. Trailer's in good shape as well. And the whole thing is ready to go. Batteries are charged up. It's ready to just go to the water and turn the key. So if you're interested, you want to find out more, or you want to have a chat about anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Just drop me an email or give me a call or fill out the callback request form on the website and I'll, I'll contact you at a time that's convenient. Thanks for watching.